Hi, I'm Nitin Myers and welcome to our ICAST presentation on SwiftLink, a compressor beam alignment algorithm for practical millimeter wave radios. Today's presentation is based on joint work with Dr. Amin Maskani and Professor Robert Heath at the University of Texas at Austin. The work that I'm going to discuss today appeared in the IEEE transactions on signal processing in the February 2019 issue. Let me start by giving you some background on millimeter wave. Radios in 5G and 1180 exploit wide bandwidths at millimeter wave carrier frequencies to support several gigabit per second data rates. Such high data rates are usually achieved through a concept called beamforming, wherein radios focus their RF signals in a particular direction. In this presentation, I am going to give you a background on compression sensing based beam alignment, convince you that standard compression sensing solutions can fail miserably under a practical hardware impairment called carrier frequency offset, and finally, I will give you details on our algorithm called SwiftLink which enables robust compression sensing even under CFO errors. So let's get started with the beam alignment problem. In this system, I consider a transmitter equipped with an n-cross and planar phase array and a single antenna receiver. The channel between the two ends is modeled using a matrix H which is of size n cross n. Here H of 0, 0 represents the channel response between the first transmit antenna and the receive antenna. Beam alignment through channel estimation occurs as follows. First, there is a channel measurement phase where the transmitter applies a sequence of phase shift matrices and the receiver acquires channel measurements corresponding to these matrices. Then, the channel is estimated from the received channel measurements and beam alignment problem now becomes trivial. It's just a matter of finding a phase shift matrix P that maximizes inner product with a chart. Now, to estimate this n cross n channel, we need the number of measurements to be at least n square. And due to the use of large antenna rays at millimeter wave, this vanilla approach through channel estimation can result in a substantial training overhead at millimeter wave. Interestingly, this overhead can be reduced by exploiting some kind of prior information on edge. And one natural prior exhibited by millimeter wave channels is sparsity. So when we look at the antenna domain channel, which is absolute value of edge taken entry wise, it's really dense. But when we take its two-dimensional discrete Fourier transform, we end up with a beam space channel which is approximately sparse. And compressed sensing is one technology that allows exploiting sparsity of the beam space to estimate channels from as few linear measurements as possible. In this presentation, I am going to take one step towards practice by considering hardware impairment called CFO. Carrier frequency offset basically perturbs the phase of the measurements and it, the phase perturbations are shown here. So when compared to the usual case of linear compressed sensing where we had y equals ax plus v, we now have a phase perturbed linear model that says y equals a diagonal matrix which is a function of epsilon times ax plus v. In this system, a is under the transmitter's control, the beam space variable x and epsilon shown here are unknown. So when epsilon is 0 or epsilon is known, we can just pull this diagonal matrix to the left hand side and what we end up is with a linear compressed sensing problem. So will this approach of linear compressed sensing work even for the phase perturb measurements? That's a big question. To understand this, I did a small experiment here. I took the beam space channel x, which is sparse, I compressed it down to about 20% the dimension of x and used a message passing based optimization technique and what you see at the output is an estimate that looks very close to the original beam space. Then I introduced phase perturbations to this model that is I perturb the compressed measurement vector AX with linear phase error increments of 0, 5 degrees, 10 degrees and so on. And what you see at the output of this pipeline is a completely distorted version of the original beam space. Prior work has looked at this problem from two different perspectives. One is to model both the CFO and the channel and the other is to phase retrieval. Today I'm going to talk about a technique that's fundamentally different from both of them. I'm going to say, okay, linear compressed sensing is very sensitive to CFO errors with the common random phase shift based acquisition technique. What if I change the compressed sensing acquisition technique or equivalently the CS matrix to a new one such that at the output of this pipeline I expect a minimally perturbed beam space version. Now this brings in a new set of problems. First, how do I define perturbations and how do I minimize these perturbations? And the most important problem in this direction is how do we go about designing the sensing matrix A? 
The design of sensing matrix A is really a challenging problem because every row of A must satisfy hardware constraints. That is, it must be expressible as a Fourier transform of a phase shift matrix P of M. In SwiftLink, we actually solve this problem by proposing a new construction for the compression sensing matrix A which achieves performance as shown here. As seen in this figure, the estimated beam space looks pretty much the same as the original beam space. And the interesting thing about our construction is that it is randomized. So let me start with SwiftLink's random compressed sensing matrix construction. Our construction is very different from the usual random phase shift based design which is not robust to CFO. So I'll go over this construction in two stages. First, I'm going to introduce to you a new concept of two-dimensional trajectory that will be useful in modeling compressed sensing matrices. Then, in the second stage, I'm going to show you how restricting randomness in these trajectories will lead to a new class of compressed sensing matrices which achieve robustness to CFO. Our idea to model CS matrices using 2D trajectories was inspired by magnetic resonance imaging, which uses the notion of K-space trajectories. In MRSCS, sparse matrices are typically estimated from fewer samples of their Fourier transform. This idea when applied to the wireless setting is as follows. The transmitter turns on its antennas corresponding to the subsampling set omega. The receiver acquires a subsample version of the channel which it uses to estimate the beam space. Although this idea has interesting advantages from a theoretical perspective, it suffers from implementation challenges. For example, the receiver sees very low SNR when the transmitter turns on a single antenna and there are per antenna power constraints in the system. Now, I'm going to show you how all the interesting advantages of partial Fourier CS can be exploited even without antenna switching. In the random switching case, the transmitter applies Dirac matrices to its antenna. An interesting property of these Dirac's is that any Dirac matrix shown here is a 2D circling shift of the first matrix D. For instance, D circling shift by 1, 2 is obtained by circulantly shifting every column of D by 1 unit down and every row of the resultant by 2 units to the right. A generalization of this idea is 2D convolutional CS, where the transmitter applies random circling shifts of a spatial code called P. In this case, the receiver acquires a subsample version of the 2D cross correlation between the channel and the spatial code P. When we apply partial Fourier CS with the subsampling set omega, in this case the circle and shift coordinates, we end up with a sparse mass beam space. Now, the interesting thing is that the beam space and the mass beam space are related with each other. That is, the mass beam space is an element-wise multiplication of the beam space and the spectral mask which is related to the Fourier transform of the spatial code. Now, we are interested in recovering the sparse beam space and not the mass beam space. Now, the question at this point is, under what condition on the spatial code or the spectral mask is this transformation invertible? In our work, we showed that when the spatial code is an outer product of two Zadov two sequences, the spectral mask has constant amplitude at all locations and the transformation can be perfectly inverted as shown here. Now, I am going to explain the notion of G-space trajectory which will be useful in designing robust CS matrices. Before I get into that, let me explain what G is. G is defined as a coded channel which is the 2D circular cross correlation between the channel and a spatial code P. Remember that when the transmitter applies 2D circling shifts of the code P according to the set omega, the receiver acquires subsample version of the coded channel. We model this compressive acquisition process using a trajectory, which is basically a path that goes to the coordinates in omega in sequence and acquires samples from the coded channel. In this section, I'll explain how to design SwiftLink's trajectory which leads to robust CS matrices. Let's go back to the phase perturb CS model. For the special case of 2D CCS, the compressed vector AX can be expressed as a subsample version of the coded channel. Now when epsilon is 0, the receiver simply acquires a subsample version of G. But when there is CF error in the system, the measurements are perturbed in phase and the phase errors linearly increase with the sample index. As trajectory goes through the samples in sequence, the phase errors linearly increase along the trajectory. Now the first question that comes to our mind is, what about random trajectories? Do they work? 
Although random trajectories work really well when there is no shear of error, under a shear of error they perform miserably. This leads to the question of designing new trajectories that result in minimally perturbed beam space estimates. To deal with the trajectory design problem, I'll first study how CFO impacts reconstruction with full sampling, then I'll propose a subsampling trajectory which is robust and finally derive guarantees. Let's take a look at a basic version of full sampling which is based on raster scan. In this case, the receiver acquires entries of the matrix G rast that has an induced phase error gradient of epsilon along the column dimension and n times epsilon along the row dimension. Using the properties of Fourier transform, it can be shown that the estimated beam space differs from the original one by a shift of n epsilon and epsilon along the elevation and azimuth dimensions. This is bad because the shift along the elevation dimension got amplified by a factor of n. A reasonable trajectory is one that results in epsilon shifts along both the az azimuth and elevation dimensions. In order to achieve such a reconstruction, the receiver must acquire entries of the matrix GA which has epsilon phase error gradients along both the dimensions. Now the question is, do we have a full sampling trajectory that can give us all the entries of the acceptable perturbation matrix GA? Unfortunately, there is no such trajectory. Let me explain this using an example. Consider sampling both the entries of GA on contour 1 using the measurement model shown here. Note that both these entries on contour 1 have an induced phase error of epsilon and this phase error is only induced when m equals 1, which is the second measurement slot. Which means the receiver can only obtain one entry from the matrix GA on contour 1. Now how does Swiftlink's trajectory work in practice? First, the transmitter applies 0, 0 circular shift of P at the first measurement slot and the receiver acquires G00. Second time, the transmitter has two options corresponding to contour 1 and it chooses one at random. In this case, it's 1, 0 circular and shift of P and the receiver acquires G10 multiplied by e to the j epsilon because a phase error of epsilon is induced in the second measurement slot. The third time, the transmitter has three options. It picks one at random and the receiver in this case gets G02 multiplied by e to j 2 epsilon. And this procedure keeps going on. At the end of this procedure, the receiver acquires a subsample version of the matrix GA. Now, can we estimate the remaining entries of GA? Yes, it is possible by exploiting the fact that the Fourier transform of GA is sparse. And in fact, partial Fourier compressed sensing can be used to populate the remaining entries of GA. The corresponding beam space estimate is just an epsilon epsilon shifted version of the original beam space. Now this idea works really well when the CFO error is small in the system. What if the CFO is large? In this case, Swiftlink uses a very simple compensation strategy. It basically splits the trajectory into two parts. The first part is the P trajectory which goes in the forward direction and the second part goes along the opposite direction but is randomized along these 45 degree contours. Partial Fourier CS using the first trajectory called the P trajectory, results in an epsilon epsilon shifted version of the original beam space, while the later half of the trajectory results in a negative epsilon negative epsilon shift. From xp hat and X n hat, which are basically shifted versions of each other, it's possible to estimate the CFO and compensate for it. Finally, the measurements that come from the first and the second components can be coherently combined to get a better channel estimate. As shown in this figure, standard compressed sensing fails even when CFO is just about 1 ppm. However, Swiftlink results in much better performance than phase retrieval or standard compressed sensing over a wide range of CFO errors. In our paper, we also derived restricted isometric guarantees for the compressed sensing matrix corresponding to Swiftlink's trajectory. While fully random trajectories, which require just about order of log n samples, satisfy RIP, they are not robust to uncertainty in CFO errors. Swiftlink's trajectory, on the other hand, requires order of n log n samples and it satisfies restricted isometry while being robust to carrier frequency of such errors. Thank you for watching and I'd be happy to take any questions regarding my paper.